All right, you know what it is. This one's going to be about ADX and how intricate it is and how dudes pull a woman no matter where he at. My man pulled a female correction officer in ADX Supermax with 23 and one lockdown. Picture that. Sit back, enjoy the ride, stick around to the end. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share this video and hit the bell notification. Let's go. All right. All right, you know what it is, man. Unique make audio, man. I'm going to tell you this one about how my man from Sacramento, you know what I mean? Uh, pulled a female, you know. Matter of fact, he was a blood. He pulled a female from an ADX Supermax. Now, this is real intricate. Sit back and pay attention. That's the cell in ADX. I sat in that cell for 23 hours a day, five days a week. You know what I mean? No wreck on the weekends. Five days a week. We get five hours wreck a day. Could you imagine only coming out your bathroom closet for five hours a week? All right? That's how I had to live. So that's how I'm trying to tell the youngins you ain't trying to live like that. So don't say that I'm promoting nothing and all this so, you know, hold up, hold up, hold up, and all this so rat bastard trolling flip-flop wearing in public crap. All right? Now, my man was sitting there, he doing his thing. You know, fly dude had little curls in his head. Cause remember, this is like 95, you know what I mean? So they still had the jerry curls and all that on that side of the coast, right? So, you know, fly dude, you know, when you go out to the rec yard, right, um, they got, right on the rec yard, they got windows. You know, see those little windows right there in the back of me in the green, right there in the back of me in the green? That's the window facing the yard. So if you're on the first floor, people could come by directly to your window. If you're on the second floor, you could look out and you bang on the window for who you're trying to call. That's in another range because only one range at a time goes to the rec yard. All right? So we sit there. Hold up, man. Hold up. Hold up. Early, early. Yeah. Yo, who this? I'm doing a video. I'm letting you know I'm recording. What's up? All right, Playboy. If you want to say something, you can say something. I just want to let you know it's recorded. This is on you. Uh, all right, family. All right. Yeah. So, you know, just, as again, I answer my phone. So y'all can't say I don't answer phone. Yesterday, I apologized to everybody that called. I'm going to return the calls today. Um, I was out. I didn't have a charger. And, you know, my phone went dead the first time in three years. I get on people for they, for letting their phones go dead because that's your communication to the world. So I, I had to get on myself for leaving without my portable charger to be able to charge it while I was on the move. So that's why I didn't accept the calls yesterday. But y'all feel free to call back today. Now, so we go to that window, and when you go to the window, you know, you'll show somebody like, yo, I got this new book of Rowan Harlem. Make sure you copy it at RowanHarlem.com. And be like, yeah, let me see it. How many pages? And you flip through it and you show them it. And then you might tell them, yo, I just got these pictures yesterday. You know what I mean? And you hold the pictures up to that little window. You know, oh, yeah, that, that that's, you know, me, Tut, Sin, you know, Shaw, you know, this in Lee County. So I might hold the pictures up and say, yeah, this the picture I got. Da, da, da. You know what I mean? And we do our thing, right? So... That's how that was. So I used to go to this dude's window because he wasn't, you know, on my floor. So only time I could talk to him is through that window. So he called me over to the window. They had my case in the Emerge magazine with the Kimber Smith story and, you know, all that. So he was like, yo, this you? And he was like, oh, man, you used to get money, da da da, da. He was like, yo, you had women. You're a real playboy. I was doing my thing, too. So that's how I met him. But now what happened with that is his... uh. You know, like I said, this is an ADX, right? Nobody liked this dude because he had everything he wanted. His mama took care of him. His mama bought him all the books, you know, sent him all the books. So, you know, she sent him pictures. So he had everything. And people in there, a lot of people didn't really have nothing because the majority of people that was there was already down over a decade or two and came from Marion over to ADX because I was one of the first inmates to open up ADX, right? You know, that's when I was there with Delroy Uzi, David Ford, you know, uh, Fly from D.C., you know, rest in peace to David Ford. Uh, tell Fly to holler at me, too, man. Good dude. I was there when his brother got killed. That's when they sent him there, and that's how I met him through the vent, you know? 
And, you know, I don't want to tell that story without, you know, talking to Fly first, but that's a Fly little ADX story. You know, with Fly, he came from uh, from Lawton. You know, he had Lawton on lock, you know, so they wound up closing Lawton and put everybody in the federal system and send him to Supermax being that, you know, he was doing things over there that, you know what I mean, they felt they needed to shut it down and he had too much control, him and his other comrades. But I'll only tell that story after I talk to Fly because that's how I do. I don't just tell stories to tell stories. I get, I get confirmation from homies. Now, if y'all want to hear, if y'all want to hear this story, you know, because I'm riding, you know, let me ride right now. Just relax. Let me ride. I'm riding early, you know. If y'all want to hear a story about Boy George and Prince, you know what I mean, out in Lompoc, you know what I mean, how everything was going to crash, put it in the comments. I ain't even give y'all a Boy George story yet or a Prince story yet, but you know what I mean, put it in the comments and, you know, I think about it. But, you know, like I said, I le I'm leaving a cell up there because I want you to see the cell, you know, for the moment. But anyway, so we in there, my man's mom's, Used to come up and visit him every week. So every week he going out to visit. We in the middle of the, the Rockies and we underground. The jail was literally underground. So ain't nobody coming in there. But man's mom used to come every week because she moved from Sacramento over there to Colorado Springs and was coming to visit him regularly. And from her coming up to visit him, she met um, Mario Villabona. You know, uh, no, not, uh, not Mario. She met... Uh, 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 Juan Ramon Mata. Let me show you a picture of Juan so you understand. Because it's going to trickle into Juan, too, because I'm riding, man. Let me ride. You know, that's Juan Ramon Mata. Official gangster was down with Escobar and all of them. Had big white halls, mansions, everything. And he's from Honduras. They even named the street after him. I told you about him before, but I'm just giving a little quick rundown, talking really fast. So we ain't got to slow down the story for the people that's new to the channel. He used to, you know, work for Escobar. Official dude from Honduras. Got a street named after him in Honduras. Got the cigars, the Juan Ramon Mata cigars. You know what I mean? He owned hotels and all that in Vegas. Big boy, big boy. That's why, you know, you know, they show you how small minded these trolls are, right? Uh, I said, I sold 25 keys a day, and they go, ooh, nobody could have did that. Nobody could have did that. Here's a man on the screen that I was locked up with that was importing tons of cocaine. Tons of cocaine. You know what I mean? Now, picture me being a troll telling them, nah, you couldn't have did that. They didn't know where you could have did that. Where you gonna put a ton? How you gonna bring a ton in? How, how you sell a ton? There's no way you could transport a ton. That's what these rat bastards and trolls sound like to me. That's why I don't even respond to them, you know? But anyway, so why Ramon Mata was on the tier with us? Like I said, I'm riding, I'm riding. I'm taking you through ADX right now. Y'all in ADX with me right now. Y'all there or what? Gunshots, gunshots. All right, wake up, wake up. All right, so now we up in ADX. Why Ramon Monte? He's so fly, so filthy rich. I get there in my property and get there for a minute because I was alleged, uh, allegedly stabbed two police in Lewisburg, kicked off a riot, turned a big industrial fan into a Jamaica on one pop for all the people that know what a one pop is, right? So they send me over there and they take Longford, send me property. So by the time my property come to the joint, right? Um, why Ramon Monte sends me down a commissary list. And he said, uh, fill out f for whatever you need, you know? So I get to join in. I just put, you know, bar toothpaste, soap, tooth, uh, toothbrush, you know, deodorant, you know, the, 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 the basic things. So now when commissary day came, they came with a big old cart with like full bags of food. And they brought me so much stuff. And all I ordered was little five items. So, you know, I take the join the cell the next morning. I go to wreck and I said, yo... I think they sent that down to the wrong cell. And he said, no, nah, my comrade, I look out for all men of honor, and I know who you are. <laughs> you know what I mean? He said, that's for you. I told you to fill out the list. You put what you wanted, so I picked some things. I hope you like it. Whatever you don't like, you can give it to somebody else on the tier. Now, this dude was so fly and filthy rich, right? Filthy, filthy rich for you uh, rat bastards and trolls, you know? He was so fly and filthy rich that he used to send everybody. We had, I think it was uh, 18 cells on a tier. 18 cells on a tier. And they left the last four cells open in case there was an emergency at another joint, like, a, you know, uprising or something like what I got there on or, you know, any type of emergency. So every unit had the last four cells open on every range. So it was 14 of us on the range. This dude used to send everybody on the range $300 a month. He'll tell you, send me your name and number. You get him your name and number, he get it, you know, he get it out to his lawyer. 
and his lawyer send you $300 a month so that, you know, you could buy the limit and the whole unit have a party on him. You know what I mean? So picture that. What, what was that? Uh, 300 times 10 is 3,000 plus the four. Call it $4,200 a month he was sending to, you know, everybody on the tier because he had to do something to spend his money. So I asked him one day, I said, man, you uh, you've been sending money to all of us, you know, for about six, seven months, I've been here now. So I'm talking about that's over fifty, sixty thousand dollars the man giving away in prison. He said, when you make money, you make sure everyone around you eat. And that's how we got cool. Because that's the way I was raised. Maybe it's an island thing, you know what I mean? Or a New York thing, you know. I don't know. But, you know, he said, I make sure everybody eats. So every month, everybody, whether you needed it or not, you got three hundred dollars on your books. That's what ADX was like when you with drug lords. That's a drug lord, you know? These rat bastards and trolls and flip-flop wearing in public clouds, you know what I mean? They, they can't phantom that, much less a kingpin. 25 keys a day. Some days it might have been 30. Some days it might have been 40. Some days it might have been 10. Some days it might have been 15. You know what I mean? But the trolls, they jump out. Oh, he's a day. Now they want, they want to do the, run and do the math on your money. That reminds me of, you know, because I'm riding. You know, I'm riding. That reminds me of when I first got the ADX and I saw on the Source magazine, they had, uh, this is how long ago it was, if y'all remember this Source magazine. I think it was 96, right? About 96, 97, when they sent the, mag uh, the Source magazine that had cash money on it when they just got their deal with Universal and they had a helicopter on the joint. Dude said, oh, that's rented. They can't be getting that money. The rap game don't pay that much money because the rappers don't get no money. Because when we was on the street, the rappers wasn't getting no money. They was getting raped. <laughs> you know what I mean? Period. But then now, the game done changed and Master P came in, then, you know, these dudes came in, and they was on the cover with all these jewels and everybody looking at it. And that was a big conversation amongst the peons. That's what I call them, the peons. You got to be a peon if you're worrying about the next man's money. Only worry about the next man's money if you're going to take it or you're trying to be a part of it. How are you going to take cash money's money or how are you going to be a part of their money when you're sitting in ADX or why are you discussing their money? But that's how they had trivial time to waste. I took that time to learn to read and write because at this time I couldn't read or write. So while they busy arguing about that, I'm sitting there with my little math book or my science GD book or my social study G book. And, you know, they looking at me. They say, Unique, what do you think about that Biggie from your hometown? How much money you think Biggie worth? And do I give a crap how much money he worth? He ain't giving me nothing. But this is the type of things they worry about. But anyway, you know, because like I said, you know, uh, uh, um, I'm riding, you know. You know how it is. So now, this dude that was there from Sacramento, his mother was coming to visit him regular, and when Juan Ramon Mata's family came, you know, this might be about Juan Ramon Mata, the way it might sound like, because this is his part of the story, because I'm riding. If you don't like the ride, get the hell out the whip. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, and make sure don't slam my door, because I will shoot you in your ass on the way out. <laughs> you know? But now, so check. Not promote nobody, shoot nobody in the ass, because you know we on this old trolling ass YouTube shit where they just look for anything. Oh, he's promoting shooting somebody. You know, but anyway, so while Ramon Monta turns around, his money's so filthy long. He went and bought a house in Colorado Springs. You know what I mean? He bought a whole house in Colorado Springs, you know, and, you know, so that when his children fly in from Honduras, you know, or California. They didn't have to stay in a hotel. They stayed in his house, and he gave the house to this dude's mama to run. So the mama moved in, run free, big, nice house. And he even bought two Lexuses, you know? He bought two 400 Lexuses back then, you know? One for his kids to drive when they come, and one that he gave to my man's mother. You see how long this money is? These are the type of people I was around for, you little rat Bastards and trolls that don't understand that 25 keys wasn't nothing. That's a drop in a bucket. You know what I mean? People, yeah, yeah, people like this wipe their ass with, with 25 keys. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, you know, so this dude's mom is now staying in this house and driving a, a, a brand new Lexus 
that he gave to her with the title. Then the other Lexus for his children when they came in. So when they came in, she went and picked him up from the airport, brought him to the house. They had the car to drive around and get up there on their own. And, you know, everything was good. So now this dude's mother start going to the local bars and stuff that the COs go to. Because she was young, look good, like to go out, have fun. And, you know, it wasn't a whole lot going on. So the COs went to the same bars as the locals. So as she's going to the bar, she meets, you know, this Spanish CO cop that used to work in a laundry. You know what I mean? She was real cool. You know, because when you get to ADX, let me see if I, I mean, see, I might have it in this picture. Let me take my man Juan down for a minute. But now, you know, in ADX, right? Oh, that's the back of the cell. In ADX, right? Let me see. Hey, do I have a front picture? In ADX, they got bars on the joint, right? They got bars on the joint. Let me try and see if I can move this up while I'm talking, see if I'm that nice with running my own system myself. They got bars in the front. They got bars in the, um, they got two sets of bars, you know? All right, let me see. Take this off. We're going to try and pop this up, see if this got it. Dang, that's still the back of the cell. All right, well, that's the cell I lived in for, you know, for years, you know, by myself watching these walls close in. But in the front of the cell, they have bars, and then it's a little sally port, you know what I mean? And a big window on the side, and then it has a wall with another window and another sliding door. So we double locked in. If we break out the bars, then you got to break out the other door just to get in the hallway. <laughs> you know what I mean? So that's how this was. But this lady used to come and stand up in the sally pool because when they come and they hit the button, they open up the metal door and then you go in the middle and, you know, they give them your laundry, you know, your law books or whatever. If the police is scared, they'll have the police come down there and the police be like two police, you know, one going on the right, one going on the left. And, the, you know, the officer coming in the middle and they got these batons. And if you put your hands through the bars, bang, they hit you, bang, and put your hands back in the bars. But this lady used to, you know, like if we come down there and we didn't get somebody something back in the laundry or we needed, you know, uh, new browns because we just came in or they gave it the wrong T-shirt, she'll go get it, bring it down, was cool with the police. So she tell them, yo, bus cell number five, you know, I got some laundry for them. They open up five, but just the front, you know, sliding door. So she's in the sally port, then it's the bars. So dude, she used to come and see dude in, in the bars where they couldn't see her because she's in that sally port from the front. And she'll hang and say, yo, your mom, I met your mother. She told me about you. She said, yeah, my mom told me about you. I said, oh, I ain't know you was that cute. Da, da, da. And, you know, he started rapping to her. So every time she'll come, she'll bring something after work. The mother wait for her, pick her up. They hang out. So they start hanging out regular. So really the mama pulled her. Not taking nothing from him because I'm no hater because he had games because he kept her. But anyway, so she kept coming to see dude in the joint and she's just bringing him laundry. And, you know, next thing you know, she brings him some panty shots. You know what I mean? We in ADX, you know. I, at this time, I'm only, I'm only down about four years. You know, I locked up in 93. This like 96, 97. You know what I mean? It's only been out four years. So now you got dudes been out 20, 30 years. You know what I mean? That's in ADX. You know what I mean? Because like I said, the day I got there, Matula Shakur left. You know, like I said, we had Dave Fly there. We had, uh, uh, I mean, Dave Ford. We had Fly. You know, we had Escobar's hitman, Tyson. Look him up, Tyson, official killer. <laughs> you know what I mean? And uh, we had Mario Villabona. That's who used to supply Harry O and, you know, Bo Bennett and them out there in the West. You know, then we had Ray Loot Lassiter. He was the one that used to, you know, uh, rob armored cars and give it to the Black Panther movement was down with Matula Shakur and all that. It's a white man, French dude, that didn't like the way they was treating blacks here. So they went around funding the Black Panther movement by robbing uh, armored cars. And before y'all, you know, rat bastards, go judging them, just know that when they did the Iran-Contras war, they put the crack cocaine in our neighborhoods, taught us how to, you know, cook it up, you know, and, you know, put that through, you know, what they say through Freeway Rick, Rick, Rick Ross. I ran into Rick Ross the other day, too, in New York. Big shout out and round of applause to Rick Ross. You know what I mean? All right, all right, relax, relax. Relax, man, relax. Let me tell my story, man. God, oh. Right, so, you know, Rick Ross, they said it's who was the main player with the Iran Contras joint. But the same way the government was using the cocaine to fund the weapons in, you know, you know, the Iran-Contras war is the same way, you know, this was going on. 
You understand? Just so you understand what I'm saying, you know. Pay attention. If you if I if I lose you, I lose you. I mean, you know, I mean, we wind the joint, you know. It'd be another view anyway. But uh so that's where he was at, right? So we all up in this joint, man. I'm talking about King Blood, you know what I mean? The Unabomber, you know, Timothy McVeigh when he was going to trial. You know what I mean? For you know, the Oklahoma City joint. I mean, I was with some of the craziest, man. I don't know how I made it out there alive with my mind still in order. But then again, I do know because Dr. Shakur told me on the plane before I got off to go into ADX, or whatever you do, don't take their medication because you're aggressive, so they're going to try and slow you down, you know? Sure enough, first day I got there, got the crazy ass whooping just for getting off the bus. Then I got another ass whooping for not taking the TB shot because I just took it the day before. I told them I'm not taking it. If y'all want to hear any of these stories, put them in the comment for any names that I mentioned, and we go up from there. <clears throat> so now, right? So Mata would send money to everybody. Everybody good. Moms met the female at the bar, put him up with the joint. You know what I mean? She started coming to see him. But this dude start taking the picture. You see that little window right above the head by the pillow? That's the wall that looks out. That, see, that little metal box you see, that was the shower. Because we never left the cell for no shower or nothing, only for that one hour a day. And if something happened in the USP, like in USP Colorado, they locked us down. Because I remember, y'all might want to hear this story. I'm going to talk to... Uh, you know, some of my, 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 my Serenos and Black Hand in California, see if it's all right to give you all the story about Champ. You know what I mean? My people in the West Coast, you know what I mean, the, the Serenos and stuff, they know who Champ is. You know Champ. Right? You know what I mean? I was in ADX with Champ. And, uh, you know, and little Herbie. You know what I mean? Herbie Weta. You know, he was from Texas. Y'all know that. If y'all from Texas, you know what I'm talking about. Herbie Weta and Champ was there at the same time when they had the big on-site war with both of their, you know, California MA and, you know, Texas MA. And, you know, I was there, you know. they I was cool with both of them. They was good men. You know, Herbie was, you know, a little older than me, baby, my age. But, you know, Champ was much older. He was the older, wiser one, good dude, right? So now, you know, see, see the names that I know. And that's why, you know, the rap bastards don't, don't, don't like that. My content is too long. You know, my history is too deep. You know what I mean? My life is too powerful. But anyway, let me get back because, you know, you know me. I'm riding. I'm riding. I'm riding. Now. So the CO chick would come and she brought him these pictures and he'll sit there and he'll hold the pictures up like I was showing you earlier. You know, let me see if I show y'all another picture yet. You know what I mean? Just to show you what time. Oh, yeah. Surprise, surprise. Everybody been asking about the little Jimmy story, right? Part three, the little Jimmy, I said I wasn't going to do it until I found the picture. But guess what I found? I finally had time to go through my stuff. The picture of the Chinese connection. You know what I mean? So I'm going to give you all the little Jimmy uh, uh, joint real soon. You know what I mean? This is the Green Dragons right here from uh, over in Queens. You know, big shout out to Chinese Brian Tone and, you know, the whole nine and, you know. But, you know, I found the picture of me with the Chinese connection so now I can give you all some of these good Chinese stories. If you want to put it in the comment. If not, I'm going to keep it going the same way I ignored it for over a year because it took me that long to dig it out because I just moved, new studio, new everything. But anyway, right? so we up in the joint. He's showing the pictures to people in the window. But he used to talk reckless to people because he was a show-off. You know what I mean? Real show-off. That's why me and him got along. <laughs> you know, we were both flossy, you know? But a lot of dudes that didn't like him, you know? And he used to sell death through the bars, you know? Meaning, and, 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 and I'm not going to front. And there's no disrespect because, like I said, I, you know, I know Lotus Park Pyro dudes, official dudes, you know what I mean? I know Rolling Sixties official you know, but this dude, yes, he was a blood, but he had nothing to do with that. But he used to do stuff like, uh, you know, he was a cell gangster. He would yell out the window, you know, out the bars. When the police came out of tear for something, if he's arguing with somebody, yo, F you, I'm going to kill you and I see you, I'm going to this, I'm going to that. And he's carrying all, woo, 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 woo. And now the police come, so now the police is going to move one of them. So he did that all the time. That was his little routine, you know what I mean? And, you know, he started a lot of beefs with people. And, you know, so I, 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 I'm getting ready to tap out on this, but I'm going to give you the ending, you know what I mean? Which is a sad ending because the dude wasn't no, no, you know, no rat bastard or nothing. So, you know, I say sad ending. He goes home and it was the Crips came to Colorado. The Crips came to Colorado and they was on the street. That's where they had a dude. I'm going to look him up. I want to tell his story. There was a crip from Colorado, a young boy, right? He went to trial. 
for like murder and all this stuff and you know he blew trial when this dude blew trial they turned around and you know he was going through the death penalty phase and he said skip the phase you know just execute me because your system crooked anyway that's how gangsters were back in my time he said yo we don't need none of that you know what i mean he said yo execute me and right, no, we can't do it without a trial. And the dude said, well, I'm not going to your trial. You know what I mean? Just execute me and get it over with. You know what I mean? Because I'm never going to be a rat bastard, and I'm not going to sit through that railroad you just pulled off on me. So, you know, just execute me. And the young boy, they actually executed him out there. You know what I mean? Without going through the paperwork or not. I'm going to look it up so you can get the name. And then uh, who was the other one? Who's another one with the execution? Oh, Timothy McVeigh. Timothy McVeigh was something else, right? Timothy McVeigh, he straight told them, you know what I mean? Skip all that. Let's just get right to the execution. We're not going to play this game because we already know this joint crooked, so I'm not going to put my family through it. But that's how gangsters move, whatever color you are, whatever race you are. And those are the ones that I call my homies. So I'm going to say this again. Let me get up in the camera so y'all could hear this. Right? Now, read the words coming out my mouth. You're not my homie because you're from my geographical location, because you're the same skin color, because you're the same race as me. That don't make you my homie. That just makes you a man. Your, 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 your conduct determines if you're my homie, because if you're not dealing with morals and principles and standing on the cold, you can never be my homie. And I won't have anything against you. Just identify yourself. Like, I'm identifying myself, what I stand for, a man. If you are a rat bastard, identify yourself. You don't need to hide. And then I know if I want to deal with you, stay away from you or not, but I'm not a rat hunter anymore. Those days are over. Now, let me go back to the story. So the, 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 the Crips came out there, they doing their thing, and, you know, being that dude, and this is at the time when, you know, Bloods and Crips was beefing hard on the street, so he in the prison yelling, the Bloods is better than the Crips, and the Bloods is tougher than the Crips, and this and that. And he's arguing because every time they put on the news, I think, uh, I think they came from Oklahoma. You know what I mean? I think the Crips came from Oklahoma. You know, for, by way somewhere, but to Oklahoma, but they wound up in Colorado, and they kept putting it on the local news. And this dude was always yelling out a tear, talking about how they was cowards and they faking and they not real crips because they not from Cali and Cali was this and this is all this. He yelling through the bars and he started all this, right? Um, with the with the homies that they homies is on the street in Colorado. And he's selling death to them. And then he's getting ready to get paroled. Make sure, make sure you cop the book of Rowan Harlem, man. All right? At aroanharlem.com. But check out what happens. Let's check out what happens. Right? This dude goes home. And they wound up blowing his face off. All from the beef that he had in ADX. They literally blew his whole face off left his mama to bury him with a closed casket because he couldn't keep his mouth shut in the prison, was selling death, you know, to the Crips that was in there, about the Crips that was on the street in Oklahoma was faking and they this and they that and all this stuff. And not knowing that, you get ready to go to the street. That's what dudes don't understand. They sell death through the bars and then they got to go back on the compound. You know what I mean? I guess because he figured he going home. These dudes ain't never going home. He can sell on death he won. He going home. He going to be good. But mind you, he's from Sacramento, but he moved out to uh, Colorado. And now he's selling death to the dude homies that's out there in Colorado saying that they wasn't real crips because they came from Oklahoma or something like that. Picture that. Tourist top off. You know? So, you know, cash app on the screen. I don't care if it's a dollar, five dollars, if it ain't nothing, at least just make sure you subscribe, hit the bell. Subscribe and hit the bell. Let's get this going and make sure you hit the like so we get this up in rotation. Share this video. All right? So I'm about to tap out and know that, yo, have a good day, man. I think I might do another Freaky Friday story. If y'all want another Freaky Friday story, you got till Friday to put it in the comments. I'll tell you a whole story about how. I'm thinking about telling the one about how when I went up in uh, River Park Towers and a girl was sucking a blow pop, put it down. Oh. Let me chill. All right. Tap it out. If you want it, you know, let me know. All right. Cheers. 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 The crime. Cheers. The crime. The crime. The crime. The crime. The crime. The crime. Hey. Press out the 
can of 26 He back on the strip, getting back in the mix What he mentions a gift, you stand up ten toes down And I suggest you pay attention to this Take a little gully, posse and put it in hall He cut from the bottom, came up from the bottom Drop the book, you should go and get it An Instagram page and a YouTube, you could go and visit Then you could consider yourself LinkedIn Sit front row and get juice from a kingpin How he went through it so you ain't gotta go do it To not pay attention would be stupid Talking about a man that probably put your grandfather on Probably the reason that him and your grams got along A man that generated millions on the block Did his time, never squilling to the cops make an audio Get it live like two G's in the night. Yeah. Drop top beamer so shine. Yeah. I let shorty go, she was wine. Yeah. Treat her like my past, she behind. Yeah. Spin a couple bands on the dapper dan. Yeah. You be back again, getting green like a Packers fan. Yeah. No cap, this a roaring uptown. Yeah. Baby horn uptown, Dominican bust down. Yeah. Now we on the positive, yeah. you we got a lot to give. Yeah. Now you trying to stop the kids from being an operative. Uh. So take heed, homie, lend it air. Uh. He started in uptown, he gon' finish dead. But now it ain't about selling drugs, buying cars It's about buying property to make the community yard So we can give back to the youth them Cause they the truth them And bless up to all the rude men